One of the number one signs that you may be absorbing other people's energy is that you have many friends that come to you when they are going through things in their life. Maybe they just went through a breakup, maybe they lost their job, maybe they're coming to you for advice. That normally is a sign that you may be somebody that is able to hold space, but also you absorb people's energy so they feel a relief when they come around you because in a way you've taken on some of that energy. I know that for me, for a long time, I was that person in the friend group that everybody would go to because I would not just listen, but I would like kind of take it on and they would feel lighter, but then I would feel much more like I absorbed that energy. Now there was one thing that changed everything with this. It was a technique that I learned from my shadow work integration coach, somebody that has a double PhD in psychology, studies Carl Union psychology, and it has completely transformed my entire life. It is easy for me to set boundaries. I have magnetic energy to where I'm not like seeking from other people. I don't feel needy or like I have to please others. I've been able to let go of the nice guy complex and more so be the most authentic version of myself. In this video, I'm gonna share with you that exact technique, how you can use it and how it will absolutely change your life. Welcome back to another video. My name is Aaron and I help people expand their consciousness. Now in this video, I'm gonna be sharing with you the frame technique, how applying this will absolutely transform your life and help you not absorb other people's energy. Now one of the first things I wanna to point to you, this was a harsh lesson that I had to learn, but when it comes to absorbing other people's energy, one of the reasons we absorb other people's energy is because we're not completely embodied. We are not in our own body enough to where we feel the separation between us and other people. And this is because a lot of times many of us went through trauma. I know through growing up, I look back and I can see that there were times I left the, you could say in a way, the bottom three chakras and we went into being and more into like the third eye or more like tuning to other people. And I think one of the reasons this is too is because when we went through trauma or pain or sometimes abuse growing up, we then had it tied to our need for survival for us to tune to other people. Did you have parents that were very hard to please? Did you have maybe unique situations growing up to where you had to uh, be a certain way in order to get your needs met? I know for me, having the abusive ex-stepmom in my life from 7 to 15 years old, I had to constantly tune myself to her energy to know how she was feeling so that I could get what I needed. Maybe I needed to go to a school activity and I didn't want to get that taken away, like band camp or something like that. Um, there, were, there was a level of uh, that tuning that then, even after she left my life and I was 15 years old, I then continued to do that. I would tune myself to other people to then get my needs met. In a way, it's a gift. I think a lot of people that are empathic or very um, like psychically in tuned or whatever we want to call that, it's a gift, but it's also kind of a curse because then it's sometimes challenging to discern our own stuff from other people's stuff. Now, when we absorb other people's energy, what that means is we're tuning to other people's energy and we're taking it on in a way we're choosing to take it on maybe just not from a conscious choice. So <clears throat> when we realize that anything we're doing at some level, we are allowing ourselves to do it, we're allowing other people's energy to come within our field, then we can actually begin to be empowered because then we can actually draw the boundary. So for me, I know that growing up, even going to parties sometimes, I would not want to go because I would just feel everybody else's energy. And because there was also a people pleasing mentality, I'd feel like I had to change myself. So it would cause a lot of frustration and it would cause a lot of confusion because I wouldn't know exactly why I didn't like to be and to go to certain places, but I just wouldn't like the vibe even before my spiritual awakening. Now, the key to the frame technique, and this is something that um, you'd see this box right here. Now imagine that everything in our reality is either the subject or the object, or in a way it's either self or other. So even looking at my body right now as I'm doing this, there is the self, which could be my physical matter, and then there is also the other, which is the space in between me and the walls. There's this square and then there's the space and the outside in between. 
Now, when you are completely embodied in your own self and you are feeling the energy inside of your body and you put the awareness there, you then start becoming more embodied, but then you can also feel the separation between you and that wall, you and the computer, you and the uh, anybody, even other people in your life. And when you do this consistently, just for five or 10 minutes in the morning, five or 10 minutes at night, you will notice that your energy begins to dramatically change because you are bringing awareness inside the body. Now, something interesting may happen as well. As you bring more attention inside the body, things may come up in your own life because you are bringing energy to where maybe you haven't been storing or putting energy inside of your body. So for example, you may have, um, you know, relationship dynamics come up that need to be looked at. Maybe it's uh, your feeling of safety or childhood trauma that comes up. You're going more in your body so that you can heal and be like this, this, uh, this more embodied version of you. But that may bring stuff up that are in the bottom three chakras that aren't healed. I know that I went to a Um, kind of like I went to somebody that's like an energy worker that, uh, when you say energy worker, it's like somebody that basically what this guy did is he could see the timeline of somebody that he was working on energetically. And he would then put his hand like over my back or something. He could see my timeline and he could remove distortions in the Akashic records. And it's this very esoteric concept, but, um, he was recommended by, uh, a friend of mine and really like talked up and I was like, oh, he, my friend's seen some amazing things happen with this guy. So I went and just from a f- couple minutes of him having his hand on my back, he was able to tell me things about my childhood that I totally forgot about. And it was extremely um, accurate, everything he was saying. But one of the things he said is that when I went through uh, my trauma growing up, I, re- I let go of the energy or I kind of escaped being in my bottom three chakras, being grounded. And what ended up happening is that energy then out of survival went from the bottom three chakras into my third eye. And it was like, in a way, what I was doing when I was making videos, he said, is I would have the video, like the information come down and then out like this, down and out like this, but there wasn't any energy down here in my bottom three chakras. So what he helped me do was to get more and remove those blocks that came Honestly, what he said was from the um, part of it was from certain people I was given my energy to. It was my ex stepmom. There were three or four mentors that he could see, or people that I used to be around uh, in my past that had a certain effect on me to where then, in a way, my energy was being siphoned. It's almost like I was sending them energy without even knowing it. And it was like I wasn't embodying these three bottom chakras. And what I had to do is, in a way, cut and feel the separation and heal the energy between me and my stepmom, between me and another mentor that I used to have when I was going through my awakening and me and somebody else in my life. And as I did that, it was like that energy came back to me and I started to more so feel those boundaries and everything began to change. Now, another thing that happened is I remember there was, there's this, uh, when we tune ourselves to others, it's a survival mechanism that we use to get our needs met. And growing up, one of the needs that I definitely felt like I needed that I didn't get was people's approval, was validation, because I had an ex-stepmom that was constantly demeaning my brother and I, and therefore, we didn't feel validated. So I would look for validation from other people, from friends, from family, and I rem- what would happen is I would lose my sense of self and sacrifice it for others all the time. So if people ask me to do something, I'd feel very inclined and very guilty if I didn't do it. I remember just even a year ago, I had a good friend of mine and she wanted her birthday was in a different state that was very hard it was in a city that was very challenging to get to and it was a two or three day birthday bash and i had at the time a lot going on i had a photo shoot that was a very expensive photo shoot that i had to do for my rebrand for my company i had that of um a costa rica plant medicine trip coming up in november but i literally rearranged everything so that I could drive 10 hours to go to the birthday party for two days to then drive 10 hours back. And driving back was through snow where there was no ledges in Colorado. There were these no ledges. And it was like, sometimes I would break and the car would just slide towards this freaking edge. It was crazy. It was a pure sign to me that I overextended myself because I felt guilty or bad about not doing something when I had a lot of other stuff going on. And it wasn't anybody's fault, but my own. I did it to myself. 
I was absorbing other people's energy and really tuned to other people. But now it's so easy for me to say no if it's something that I'm losing my sense of self to do. So the game changer is what you do is I have something called the Frame Technique Workshop where I show you step by step how to do this. There's a new app out that is called High Viber, H I G H V I B E R. It shows you step by step how to apply the Frame Technique, and we go through a little mini exercise with it. And it is in when you log into High Viber and you make a free account. It's completely free. It's an app you can download on Apple or Android, or you can go to HighViber.com. I'll link it below. You can download that app and at the top you will see the frame technique for you to do. You could do that workshop. It is very powerful and it'll show you step by step. But it has to do with a candle flame, feeling the separation between you and the candle flame, being inside of your own body, feeling the separation between you and family members, you and friends, you and your significant other. And as you put the awareness more in your body and you bring the energy back to self, you will feel more magnetic. You will feel more present to the moment. You will feel more empowered and it will change your entire life. So with that, that's something I think is very powerful. If you want me to um, talk more about the frame technique or share with you and maybe do a live on it inside High Viber, like this video, comment below, maybe we do a live activation together. Let me know. Other than that, as always, I'll talk to you on the next video. Peace, much love, and namaste.